Happy Thursday. I was at the Department of Developmental Services this morning, otherwise known as DDS, working on Daniel's budget and the plan for his vocational day program. I'd be hiring one or two people for a maximum of 30 hours a week to come in and do direct support, vocational stuff, you know, um, go on trips with him to um, everything from the movies, the library, the community center, whatever, you know, have outings and then once a week or whatever we decide and then do things in the house with him from art to music to I don't know, whatever. We have a long list of things that he likes. So that's pretty exciting. But we had to establish the payroll. Now I'm just waiting because I have to send some paperwork back for the budget process. Everything I think is rolling. The person has to be trained with what they call the College of Direct Supports. It's a program that they get paid to do. It's like an online training program to certify them to be this kind of a worker. And then, what else? I don't know. Then the person starts. Why we determine the schedule and what they're going to do. So, the nice thing is, one of the people I know, who's one of his old nurses, and then I'm able to find another person. So, yeah. If you live near me, I might have been able to hire you. So, anyway. It's been a little stressful, I have to admit. I should have had this done probably like before the end of June, very early in June. But I just got really overwhelmed. Like, just not just busy, but emotionally, because Daniel's transitioning was really hard for me. Still is hard, it's all hard. I was crying in the pool when I was with John the other day, just, be, just thinking about not having Thomas's presence in the house every day. It's just like, whoa, that's gonna be like really sad. He's my gentle giant. He's just like this beautiful constant source of laughter and hugs, you know? He's, Thomas is really, really something. It's bad enough that I miss Sarah in California, right? So now I'm gonna have one in Boston and one in California. But it's good to know that I'm getting Daniel set up. And no, I haven't been at work. I haven't been at work this whole week except for Monday because I basically said, you know what? I can't do it. I can't put my brain there and then put my brain here and then put my brain there and like be so fragmented. I might be deciding that, like I keep talking about, that maybe, I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm holding on to the insurance job because it's so flexible and it's one thing that is not really, you know, totally sexy and exciting to do, but it's a good place and it can be good money if you if you are there so I don't know it's finding a good balance is kind of what I'm saying when Daniel's healthy and good like he is now so yeah And you do it in the gazebo. Daniel, touch them. Or what are you afraid to touch them? Touch them.
likes the, uh, well, it looks like a frog, but it's a fish, obviously. Let's try again. I did it! I'm not going to let you throw that all over the floor because the dogs will eat them. Okay, so. Took the dogs to the dog park earlier. And it started raining on us. Now it's really raining. Nice and good. Pouring. But I ordered pizza tonight for dinner because I was tired. I took them out. Earlier I went to DDS. Then I went to Target. I picked Daniel up, as I showed you in there a minute ago. Some new things to play with. A game um, that he can hit the thing and it makes the little critters go through the fish's mouth. And then he has four of those water beads, which he really enjoys. I got a whole container of them. Those came. And I got some trays to put them in. Some new movies. We got How to Train Your Dragon 3. And then, what's the other one? Oh yeah, Winnie the Pooh, what's that one? Christopher Robin. There's a lot of movies out there, but I picked those two up on sale. For 20% off with my Target card. And Daniel's gift card, rather. He had a Target gift card. And I got some lights to decorate the gazebo and the tent that we're gonna use in August for Thomas's party. Now I'm gonna fold some laundry and eat some dinner. Even though they can be very, very similar um, in symptoms. <clears throat> so caregiver burnout. The memorial I list all of them here. So um, when your cortisol level is off, all of these things are going to be impacted. So if you think of a stressed out response, when we feel stressed out, that causes a high cortisol level in our body. So I think of that as kind of this accelerator, right? And, and there's a reason for that. When we're stressed out, we need like a pump of adrenaline to kind of get us through, right? Um, and that's helpful. There's nothing wrong with that. But what happens when you're in a chronic state of stress is that accelerator stays on. And it stays on, it stays on, it stays on. And it's not socially sanctioned. It's not acknowledged. It's not recognized by others. It's not publicly mourned. Right? There's a few things that happen. Sometimes we push it down. We deny it. We don't feel like it's legitimate. Right? We don't recognize it for what it is. We will offload it onto other people in terms of that um, being less patient, being more frustrated, all of those things. There's all kinds of ways that we think we're dealing with it, but we're really not. Right? Um, so understanding that that complicates it even more, making it even more important for us to recognize it for what it is, and then to get support to move through it. We are two of the body's first reactions to stockpiles of hurt and pain. Okay, so if you have those symptoms, even if they're um, not constant, even if they come and go, um, if they are there, the depression and the anxiety, then I would encourage you to take note of that, right? It's your body telling you there's some pain here that could probably be addressed How to build resiliency and um, the importance of relationship in nurturing and sustaining our individual resilience. So if you are one of those people who retreats and isolates, um, how can you start to maybe open yourself back up to some of those relationships? Questions. And then we're gonna talk a little bit about what, what do you do, what do you do with it? Something has to give. What is it going to be? Where can you move things off your plate and make more room for yourself, for rest, and for quiet. Looking after these basic three, eating, sleeping, and exercise or movement, whatever you like to call it. Because when we have that stress in our body, it needs to work itself out. There needs to, movement is the best way to do that. It needs to literally be worked out of our nervous system. And so it's very difficult to do if we're not moving our bodies in some way. A, a walk, a very nice walk could be as much as it would take. But eating, sleeping, and exercise movement, looking at how are those three pieces, how are you doing with those three pieces starting there? I would encourage you to check out um, my website. Hope to have that blog post on um, up in a few weeks or so about how to really make a concrete, serious plan about getting to a better place, um, having that self-care so that you can build that resilience, having more self-compassion. It's all 
really, really important. All right. Oh, right on the hour. Um, so this is my contact information. Um, I will just leave it here for you um, in case you want to be in touch or have follow-up questions for me or want to check out, like I said, the, the blog post that I wrote. I would be really happy for you to, to do that. Wow. I am super tired all of a sudden. I just watched a webinar that somebody in my Polymicrogyria support group referred me to about the toll of trauma on caregivers, like long term. And of course, it you know talks about the health effects and mental, physical, emotional health effects of long term trauma and grief. And then offered some really, really good, poignant questions about resiliency and what to do to take care of yourself because really all of the things that I've gone through are mentioned in this webinar. Depression, grief, um, all the things. I'm really tired right now. I think I'm doing a good job working towards healing and positive things yeah. doing things for myself and all of the stuff that I do artistically and all that anyway oh wow I'm tired so tired <laughs> in a good way it was a full day it was a full day of stuff and brain stuff and good thinking stuff so I'm going to go to bed and try to sleep good. It's only 9 o'clock, but I'm like ready to sleep. Yeah. Too much thinking at 9 o'clock at night for me. The webinar was, I think, based off the West Coast. So 5 o'clock their time, but it's 8 o'clock. It started here. And it is hard to think that much when you're ready for bed. <laughs> About to leave, already packing. Come with me, I'm not really asking.